This is about a nine-year-old writing on walls and furniture, also having major meltdowns when things don't work well with distant learning. Um, he'll cry, scream, throw things, and pound on the computer. Um, so I guess the first question is, is this completely telehealth? Like there's no support going into the home and you're just supporting the parent on how to deal with this. Um, and so in terms of the writing on the walls and the furniture, it's it's kind of, I guess, a comfort level. Like I, I was recently like scrolling through, you know, videos and stuff. And there was uh, a parent of a child with autism who um, they've kind of designated a room in their house where this child is safe and he's occupied and he's allowed to write on every surface. So, and the parents are totally fine with that. They're happy that he's allowed to be creative and that he's, you know, he's free and he's safe and, and they really love it and like it, it works for them. So I think that this is kind of a conversation of um, if the parents don't want it and it's not becoming dangerous or if it's, you know, inhibiting him being a, a good member of the household and the community, then it's concerning. Um, the child I remember seeing was much younger, like this is a nine-year-old and it depends like how much it's affecting the parents and the rest of the family. Um, but I, I think that would be concerning. And I think depending on the child and their level of ability and understanding, is it something that can be worked on? Hopefully, um, if you should refer the parent, I, uh, I think so. Yeah, there might be more to look at here. If you're having major meltdowns. Um, crying, Sorry, crying. can I cut you off, Shirek? I just wanna go back to the writing on the walls as well. I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. First of all, I'm giving a little smile because the client you just discussed was our shared client years ago, and I haven't thought about him in a while, and I just miss him. Uh, but secondly, the uh, writing on the walls, just the flip side of what Shira said, you know, offering a time and a place. Uh, I disagree with that to a certain extent. So if parents are comfortable with that, awesome. And if the kid can discriminate between, you know, I write on this wall and I don't write on this wall, amazing. I've seen the flip side. I've seen the flip side whereby, you know, those like, colored soapy pens that you get and you can play in the bath and write on the walls in the bathtub. Um, a parent was giving their kid that and that generalized to all the walls in the house. Um, so be careful with that as well, that if you either need to do like an all, like you may need to do an all or nothing approach because the child may not understand that gray zone between like, I can do it here, but I can't do it here. Um, so if that's the case, if the kid can't discriminate between what walls to write on, then I would say, Nope, none. Um, here's paper. Give them here. You can write on paper. You can write on this, and make sure that paper is always available. Maybe it's an easel. Maybe it's something like that, um, but not walls. The other thing too is looking at you know the functional assessment of that. So, what's the purpose of writing on the walls? Is it just because he has never been taught that he shouldn't be writing on walls, or that he has nothing else to play with? Maybe there's no leisure activities available, so he's doing that. Um, maybe he thinks it's beautiful, and he's going to be the next graffiti artist who's going to make it famous. Um, or maybe it's attention, right? Maybe it's, you know, something parents say and, and what have you. So you really do need to look at the function of that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the same thing, I think with the meltdowns, like look at it from a functional perspective, like why is he having those meltdowns? Is it escape? What's happening after he has the meltdown? Does the, you know, distance learning go away? Does he get out of those demands? What's his language level like? Can he ask for help with someone there helping him if it is escape? So I think I would look at the, the, the second half of that um, from you know, a functional perspective and trying to think about what's in it for him, what's the function, um, and thinking about teaching the parents how to support some sort of replacement behavior. The replacement behavior could be um, you know, asking for help when he really gets frustrated, pounding on something else that's not a computer, um, any one of those things, like it's depending on the function. I have a student right now who's doing distant learning and uh, he's got good days and he's got bad days. But his good days are when he knows who's going to be the therapist on the screen. So he can predict, he knows certain schedules and, you know, so-and-so's on this day and so-and-so's on that day, et cetera. And he does better with that. Um, if we change therapists, he doesn't do so great. So what we're doing is we do need to change therapists. We give mom the heads up ahead of time. He's a little bit older. So I just suggested to mom that this student gets his own email account and then we can email him or text him or something when therapists do change so that he knows that ahead of time. So making sure that your nine-year-old has a schedule of what to expect and when, when he's on the screen and doing online learning <clears throat> and also frequent breaks. You know, I've seen it, I've seen it with my own daughter. She's, you know, on, 
online learning. And honestly, by noon, her face is white and she's like a former shell of herself. Um, so just making sure if, you know, if this, this kid can get some frequent breaks, maybe some outside time, maybe some extra water, healthy snacks, you know, you've got the tendency just to eat, I don't know, like a granola bar or something like that when you're online, but, you know, mm -hmm. seeing if you can actually get some healthier snacks in there as well. So, you know, kids aren't bombarded with sugar when they're online either. Not that that's very behavioral, but um, it does mm -hmm. seem to help. Also, I'm wondering if the meltdowns are recent, like with the introduction of distance learning, like, is this really out of character for them? And before distance learning, like this was never an issue. Like if the child is nine, like, is this completely new? Um, <clears throat> if it's new, then, you know, it could be you know, a different solution because it may just be just like, they're not good at distance learning. Um, you know, think of another way to, to teach them. Um, if it is, really is in their character and they were having these methods before and the distance learning has made it worse, then, then yeah, like we said before, like think about the functional approach to that. Yeah, Diana, you were also saying that this child has no diagnosis right now and wondering if you should refer them. If you've got any concerns, I mean, you know, kids who are having meltdowns that severe, um, there might be you know, not that they may, they may not have autism, but they might have something else. or they may have some attention issues. So, you know, just when you're like, I call it your spidey senses, but when your spidey senses are going off like that, it is great to get another professional involved if possible. Yeah. So they were having those kind of meltdowns for years in relation to an iPad. Um, and now it's coming out with distance learning. Then yeah, there needs to be some sort of intervention on how to decrease that behavior and increase the replacement behavior. Oh. Interesting. Some parents. Yes. Par par also training the parents and coaching the parents on what to do, you know, if it's working for him in his home, because every time he has a meltdown, parents rush over and, you know, try to appease him with his favorite things, then that will definitely affect the increase in meltdowns. Um, so also involving the parents and getting them to, but that comes along with understanding what the function is and then training the parents on how to, you know, respond appropriately.